welcome to our first Entrepreneurship at UBCO Mentor to Market session for the winter term. I'd like to take the time to thank our founding sponsors, Lawson Lundell and MNP. They financially support our program and even more importantly, share their wisdom as mentors to our ventures and now also the law firm and accounting firm of record for a number of our star ventures. Today, we're presenting live case number three, content versus context. Our speaker today is the CEO of the immersive media company, we show up, Khalil Ashanti. Khalil, just under a year ago, acquired the IP of Bandit VR, which is one of our E at UBCO companies, founded by engineering professor Ken Chow and PhD student Vincent Loy. Ken and Vincent have now joined Khalil's team. Khalil, as you can see here, is an extraordinary man. He's a tech CEO and web developer, and he's a very successful actor. Today, he will share how he applies insights from his acting career to his CEO role, pitching to customers and to capital sources. You will learn why it's important to be able to connect to both your customer or investor's heart as well as their mind, and more importantly, how to do it. You are very fortunate to be working with an expert. Khalil has a deep well of experience from performing his own comedy and magic show at Caesars Palace, to performing for Cirque du Soleil twice, to break dancing for troops in dangerous war zones for the US Air Force, to writing and taking a play to Broadway, to acting in multiple television shows. Khalil has spoken multiple times at the Global South by Southwest Conference and Festival in Austin, Texas, that celebrates the convergence of interactive film and music industries. We're very fortunate to have a man with us today who really loves to share his story. Hey, thanks, Camille. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to, to hang out with me today. Um, I really am excited to share my experiences with you because I, I, I do find that as startup founders, as, as, as uh, creative souls, we're constantly hoping to be remembered. We're constantly hoping to make that impact that we seek to make, but it's so difficult to do in an industry with so much success theater and what I call emotional Botox. So things that you do to make yourself look bigger than you are, when in fact where you are is incredibly valuable. And it's hard to realize that if we focus on content because we live in a world where there's way more content than we could ever consume. And I don't have a ton of time today, but I did wanna to touch on a few things that, that help you understand context. Um, if we're talking about food, which is a favorite of mine, content is the food, but the context is the plate and the presentation. Uh, Camille mentioned that I, um, I, I, I performed magic in Japanese at Caesar's Palace for three years. As a kid, I was raised in Japan. And one of the things I remember about eating sushi in Japan versus eating sushi in Vancouver is the presentation and the context. And there's, I just wanted to take some time to hopefully provide you with some tools and some of my own experiences that have helped me sort of understand how the, you can use context to relate and to draw those in that you seek to serve. Uh, so, so if you'll bear with me, there are, there are three uh, different frames I wanted to introduce to you that you'll be able to to use with your mentors, sort of call them three cornerstones of uh, context. They are find your frame, validate the audience, and make it real. So I'm just want to talk through a few of these, and um, and uh, please forward any email, uh, questions to Camille uh, afterwards. I'm happy to talk in more more depth afterwards if you'd like. But let's start with find your frame. You know, context really means put me in the picture. Before you start showing me your slides, before you start telling me about your technology, before you start telling me about your startup, what's possible in your world? You know, wh where are we? You have to assume that your audience doesn't know what you're talking about. Set the scene, describe the change, to talk about how things were versus how they are now. It's really important that you make us curious because at the end of the day, these folks aren't just buying your company, they're buying you. And one of the things that cannot be replicated in the world of tech is you, your journey, how you got here. What would be missing from your life if you weren't here? So take a minute and think about why you're doing this and what it is you bring to the page. And remember, 
you know, one of the things I, I advise not to do is just to go bring up slides and read the words off the slides because that's boring. And, you know, a few slides in, people are back to their Instagram. Remember that it's your job to capture the imagination. Start by framing the bigger change. Um, describe not just the problem in pain, but the opportunity and possibility that comes with working with Liza rather than Sam or Chris or Camille. Because these folks, oftentimes your audience is hoping you're the startup. You know, whether your audience is an investor or wherever, you know, they want you to be the one. But you have to give them context as to where you're coming from and what it is you're bringing to the table that they're not going to get anywhere else and why. So you're rethinking education, you're reimagining the dating process, you're responding to the future of advertising. Now, and these are just crazy examples, but remember, there are several startups run by people every day uh, that, that are solving problems that the founder doesn't actually care about. Maybe she just thought of it. It's not, not impossible to go that route, but it's very difficult to last. Remember, you're starting a company, and despite what you read in TechCrunch, it's very difficult, and it's, it's the long game. And so if you're going to be in it for the long game, it might as well be something that appeals to you that you can't live without or something that you really care about. And in order for us to buy in, you really need to convince us that, you're, that you actually care about it. Um, validate the audience. One of the things that I um, try to make a huge point of is to know your audience before you go in the room. Understand who you're talking to. Uh, when it comes to pitching, you know, one of the best, one of the, some of the best advice I've ever received was that a pitch deck in person is not the same as a pitch deck you email someone. Because in person, they don't want you to read for them because we can read. One of the things that I always give tell my clients when I work with them on performance is give me something with my eyes open that I cannot get with my eyes closed. If you're just going to read off of slides, you could just email that to me and save us both a lot of time. So understand your audience. Focus on the emotional experience of your audience when, when you're, you know, when you, as you describe what it is you're bringing to life, what you're bringing to the world. Um, remember that you have lots of different audiences. So one of the things I like to do is work with people on create a core message, a core value proposition that you can adjust for different audiences rather than creating a completely different presentation for each audience. Um, as, as I'm sure Camille and Sarah can tell you, you're gonna do a lot of pitching. You're gonna talk about your company a lot. So understanding who your audience is, whether they're customers, investors, press, stakeholders, maybe they're in-laws at Thanksgiving, you know, wh whoever it is, uh, you need to be able to, to make them the hero of the story. Um, your startup is ultimately for them. You know, what, what do they want? What is their desire? And what's getting in their way? What's complicating that journey for them to get what they want? Um, you know, the core dilemma that your company is solving for. And once you can tell the story to them, you can adjust for other audiences. But it's really important that you, um, that you just take a minute as you prepare your pitch and to understand that one of the hardest things about this particular cornerstone of context is that not everyone's going to be your audience, and that's okay. Uh, I've performed on Broadway, at New York Times critics pick, and had people walk out of my show, just get up and walk out in the middle of the show. And it terrified me, but the more I performed and the more I realized, wow, well, it's not for them. And I think that's, that, that's something that's translated to the business world as well. When I performed magic in Japanese at Caesar's Palace, well, I saw a need and I remember Japan. I remember the, the, the difference in learning a language when you live there and learning it from Duolingo or, you know, wherever. It's, it's very different. So I could really understand how to speak to that audience. Um, and that actually became my first entrepreneurial endeavor that Caesar's Palace licensed from me uh, in 1997. So I I probably just aged myself, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from is that I really cared about that audience because I spent my childhood there. So when I pitched it to the, the, uh, the director of PR and marketing at Caesars Palace, it wasn't just a guy trying to make money. Um, the last uh, cornerstone of context I wanna talk about is, is called evidence. 
make it real. What gives you the right to be telling this story? Um, how do you know the promise of your story is true? How do we know the promise of your story is true? Please give us some evidence as an audience. We, I think you'll find um, that in today's society, it's a very cynical society. And that's something I think entrepreneurs nowadays have to deal with that maybe entrepreneurs even five years ago didn't have to deal with. With the world of apps and all the different tools that we have, any person on the street thinks they're an expert at the subject you're talking about because they read it on they read it online. <laughs> you know, uh, as an American, I can tell you that's a particularly uh, sticky subject when it comes to different things because people think they know, and and it's important for you to present credible evidence. Um, now, if your company is something that can't launch or can't get evidence because you're operating on human beings, well, obviously we understand that. But it, but anything you can do to provide that solid foundation of evidence and reality and your approach and why it matters and making it real to us really, really puts you ahead of the others. Your personal story fits in there as well. Sometimes evidence is, hey, my grandmother has owned this winery for X amount of years and she was a great entrepreneur and I saw her struggle with X, Y, and Z as a kid and I worked the counter at the winery and here we are. Whatever that is, don't forget that. Please don't take the, the, the uh, approach that your own personal story is anything less than impactful and important, even if you think people have heard it before. You know, what is your commitment or expertise that's going to validate this endeavor? All of these different things are just different layers and touch points of context that are going to allow you to stand out. Because one of the things that's really difficult when you are uh, sharing your story in the, in the form of a pitch um, or, or a conversation, which is what all pitches should be anyway, as conversations, you want to be remarkable. You want to be remembered. And one of the things that it's difficult to depend on is you waiting for someone else to validate you. You know, I hope that if I just could just get Grant Lawrence to give me half a million dollars, wow, that would be great. Uh, we, we as, as creative souls, as performers, as entrepreneurs, we're constantly looking for that external validation. But what I love about bringing context into the picture is that we walk into the conversation with this pitch, with a, a love for sharing our story, a love for sharing what we're up to. We validated ourselves and I'm saying, hey, Camille, hey, Sarah, hey, investor or whoever, I'm on this ride and you're welcome to join me if you'd like, but I'm not sitting here begging you for validation because I have context, because I'm standing on firm ground of something I believe in, something I truly love, and something that I just can't get out of my head. Uh, you know, when I, when I think about we show up and, and the things that I'm involved with, uh, like I get out, of, I, I can't wait to get started on it every day. It's almost... It's hard to have weekends sometimes. It's like, man, I can't wait. we can do this and, and we can do that. And I love talking to people about it. Um, so those are the three cornerstones of context. Find your frame. Um, you know, remember that we don't know what you're talking about. So tell us, tell us where we are, what's possible in your world. Validate the audience. Remember that when you are performing, I, I truly believe that when you tell a story, it's an act of service. It's about them, not about us. So make that real and make sure that you know them. Make sure you know your audience as well as you can. And lastly is evidence. Make it real. Um, tell us why you have the authority uh, to tell this story and, and where you stand on this issue and why. The last thing I wanted to share with you when it comes to context is that you really cannot forget the why. Uh, it, 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 it's a grind, ladies and gentlemen. It's a grind to, be, to have to talk about your companies over and over and over again. And most startups fail and you hear all these things. But if you have something that motivates you beyond just your company and you have that why, you'll, it'll be a lot harder for you to give up. Um, a lot of you are in the position you're in because some of your relatives who are immigrants gave up so much for you to have this opportunity at UBC. And there's so many people who could never even dream of, of doing the things that you've done, even though you don't think you've done much. So think about the people 
who have believed in you, the people who sent you on this path, the people who are sitting there cheering you on from home, or the people who might not be cheering you on, but the people who motivate you. And remember that everything you do is for them and that no amount of money, no amount of investment capital can replace the feeling of pride that you feel in yourself for doing what you set out to do and adding incredible value to the lives of your customers. So I hope that helps. Um, thank you, Camille uh, and uh, Sarah for letting me share. And um, I'd, I'd love to be able to share more. And um, thanks again. Khalil, thank you so much for, for this. Um, you never fail to inspire me and uh, I hope that others have uh, found uh, inspiration and value and a little bit of wind in the sails from, from your talk. Uh, I really appreciate it.